Good morning. Today I Utsav Chaudhary am going to present my design dissertation on the topic dignity in death. Dignity in death. What does any of these terms mean in relation to the thesis? Let's have a look by decoding them individually. The phenomena of death has a scientific and an idealistic meaning behind it. Where science defines it as a loss of life, many religions believe that death is just a state of rest. in which the individual lies till one day some phenomena causes them to rise again some religions on the other hand substitute the word death with rebirth believing that the soul has already moved on to a new life dignity is an abstract term that gains its value from religion years of tradition and customs followed by a certain community or person the aim of the research was founded on the pretext that funerary architecture needed a change and by the end of the thesis journey was to come up with a solution by developing a better architectural response for this dignified death practices of different religions were studied along with their relations with architectural spaces illustrated below is the process for a typical hindu cremation where the body is prepared at one's home surrounded by the family members to the cremation typically conducted in an open space near a water body and then finally to scatter the ashes of the loved ones in a pious water body a dignity in terms of environmental effects were also looked into to understand the positive and negative impacts of a funeral on the environmental habitat namely cremations and burials were looked into The affordability of a funeral was also questioned by looking at the bare minimum cost of a funeral service and whether the poor of the country can provide their loved ones a dignified death at an affordable price. For the study, three groups of users were recognized. Number 1 were the people that live nearby a funerary building. Funeral spaces are usually cramped in urban spaces, which might lead to spread of diseases, and also people generally prefer not living near a funeral space, calling them eyesores. The friends and family of the deceased are the main group of users that interact with the funeral space. These spaces usually lack infrastructure and the user is constantly faced with issues like long waiting times to even play, paying bribes. And lastly the workers employed in these funeral spaces usually disappear into obscurity where their comfort is generally overlooked, they are overworked, underpaid and their living spaces are dilapidated. After understanding their difficulties a design approach was formed for the mentioned users something that would provide better living conditions reduce spreading of disease improve the user experience in a funeral space promote safe practices and learning and have a smaller negative impact on the environment now armed with the knowledge and understanding of how to improve the funerary spaces an apt site with a suitable history was to be looked for The site was finalized in Mathura, Uttar Pradesh, a place of rich cultural heritage, credited for being the birthplace of Sri Krishna. It was no surprise to find out that 91% of the population practiced Hinduism, which made it simpler to cater to this user and build a funeral space that accommodates their needs. The site was finalized on the outskirts of the city, sitting at 24 acres of site area. It was surrounded by residential spaces in the north. and the west along with a medical college and rto offices in the north and northwest it is also located on the banks of river yamuna the region falls under composite climate where the temperatures are usually high in daytime and fall drastically in night time rainfall is scarce at approximately 300 mm per annum the major wind direction are from the east and northeast and in the winter this direction changes to the west and the northwest The site has a major road of 12 meter width passing along its western edge that acts as the main access for the site. A kachcha road on the north also exists on the site but isn't a government sanctioned road. The site zoning divides itself as shown where the area abutting the roads acts as access zones. Internal areas along with the river edge become the part of the crematorium and the southern chunk of the land becomes the staff quarters. The concept revolves in achieving and providing the sense of dignified death to the loved ones of the users 
which is done by having an in-depth understanding of religious customs and how they influence a cremation ritual, the context of Mathura and its significance in developing the design and allowing for a sense of community and family within the site. Design considerations include making the circulation in the site into a cycling loop that does not let one's user experience interfere with other. A crematorium has to be a place where experience plays just as an important role as any other requirement. The crematorium should allow for private spaces that allow users to take a pause and collect themselves. And lastly, a crematorium functions from sunrise to sunset, so daylight entry had to be maximized. To understand how the site curates this experience, it is important to go through the site as a user. Arrival the site has an entrance that can accommodate the people who come to visit their loved one. A loop-like circulation allows for drop-offs and parking before entering the site. For body transporters and ambulances, park spots are available near the entrance for easy unloading. Service parking entrances are kept separate to allow for lead disruption with the users. Open areas in and around the entrance serve as informal waiting areas. When at the entrance, the user is greeted by a tall and thick fort-like boundary wall, which hides the crematorium from the layman's perspective and asks the user to step in to see the interior of the site. Upon entering the site, some people are reluctant in witnessing a cremation. This can be due to a personal, religious or traditional reason. For them and for many people waiting, the waiting space is provided. It acts as an informal area where users are able to take a break from participating. Abutting the waiting area is a cold storage which is, which is used to store bodies in case the cremation is not to be done on the day of the passing. As seen in the cross section, the waiting area is a semi-open and pergola roofed space that creates a calm, isolated environment. Here, the users face and find comfort in each other. Facilities like drinking water and lavatories are also provided here. The elevation shows the jali that makes up the entrance of the waiting hall and further ahead where the cold storage is located. Here we look closely at the detail of the jali that is used in the waiting hall and many other spaces. The jali starts with the symbol Om, placing grid lines over it to create an abstract form. This abstract form can now be prefabricated and stacked on top and along of one another around an RCC frame to create the jali effect. Simultaneously, they can be attached on top of a wall acting as a cladding or even placed on the fenestration of a roof to create a skylight. Once the users assemble and head into the crematorium, as shown in the view, they are led along a walkway that ramps down to the gathering space. Lush green landscape adores its edges and a water canal flows along the center of it. The canal is meant to be a metaphor for Yamuna River, acting as a guide to the users. Once the users arrive at the gathering space, they are met with a massive open space and facing the users is a temple complex that brings a sense of safety and assurance to the users who are shaken after the loss of their loved one. The gathering space allows for the users to keep their belongings along the seating spaces and head into the temple complex to seek blessings. Other activities like shaving of head of the head mourner are also carried out here. The roof plan shows the pergola over the seating space. It is a common folklore tale that Lord Krishna had raised Govardhan Hill with his little finger to provide shelter to the people from a flood. The massing of the temple takes inspiration from this tale, where the three fingers symbol symbolify the steps leading to the temple, the little finger the singular support and the place where the idol is kept, and finally the mountain becoming the shikhara. Shown here is the view of the temple on the raised plinth, where four RCC columns hold the wooden joy stack that forms the tall mountain like shikhara. In the sections, the relationship between the temple and the gathering space is highlighted and shows the people approaching it. In the cross section, the water canal is shown to envelop the temple and how it moves along it. As mentioned before, the canal is a metaphor for the river and the plan shows how it is actually achieved. The origin of the canal is at the entrance. 
followed by the canal dividing itself at the temple and then again coming back together around the temple. And as it heads to the river, it takes a delta-like form before eventually disappearing into the river. The image on the top left shows the view of the canal from the temple. Two massive blocks act as flood deterrents so that the high tides do not flood the temple and other interior spaces. The view shows these blocks. Once the temple has been understood, it is important to know how it defines the axis of the site with the canal and other walkways along the cardinal directions. These directions define the next program after the gathering space, that is, the prayer halls. These are spaces where users congregate to celebrate the life of the deceased, making them immortal through memories and thus allotting the position of naught, which is denoted with immortality. In contrast, the south of the canal lie the cremation spaces. This is because death and change are symbolic of the southern direction and provide a sense of balance to the zoning of the site. The prayer hall is a space for remembrance. The users gather here to pay eulogies to the deceased. The hall allows for about 250 to 300 people seating capacity. The greeting space acts as a buffer and an entrance before entering the hall. The idea of immortality is carried out in the elevation treatment where the structure is coated with a rough stone-like lime plaster overflowing with vines and plants on the green roof. The Jali entrance is tough and rough in its, in its visual texture, seeming as if it has stood the tests of time. In the cross section, the prayer hall's interior is shown. The back wall of the stage is cladded with red sandstone that stays illuminated due to the skylight. This can also be seen in the axonometric. The longitudinal section shows the curtain wall on the east that brings light into the hall and the plaster on the wall is applied in long thin lines that cast shadow on itself. The larger prayer hall follows the same concept similar to the smaller prayer hall but allowing for a congregation of about 500 people. The section shows how the sunlight and curtain wall allow maximum light into the structure. After the prayer halls, the user prepares to head into the cremation space. Here, the path is forcefully faced in the southern direction to impose the idea of change and afterlife. Same lush greenery is around the pathway, but at the end of it is a banyan tree. A signifier of God and a sign of immortality, it reassures the user that God hasn't left their sight. Chali walls make the space even more intimate. Before entering the cremation area, burial spaces come first. According to Hindu belief, only three groups of people deserve burials, one being holy men, two pregnant women and thirdly infants. Three separate burial grounds are provided for the same reason. A mango tree in the center of each ground signifies a fruitful afterlife and concrete blocks around the perimeter have holy quotes inscribed on them. As the user now approaches the cremation block and lights the funeral pyre, he or she has to take care of this pyre much similar to lighting a diya, where the hand instinctively comes to protect the flame. To understand the activities at the cremation block, Number one, the preparation of the body before the cremation, where excess clothing and jewellery is removed and the body is washed. The body is then placed on pyre and is lit. The curved wall protects the flame from the wind. And finally, the seating that helps the user retreat and wait till the pyre is completely burnt. In the plan, it is seen how each module of the cremation block protects the other from the east and west wind. This cremation block uses wood, agricultural waste and cow dung for the cremation to reduce the environmental impact. The cross section and isometric show the scale of the wall around the pyre. They are intentionally made taller and thicker to survive the high temperatures from the funeral pyres. The second cremation block are comprised of gas cremation systems. Since the machinery is prone to damage, the block has to have a roof over it. The Jali skylight is placed over the corridor and the seating is kept open to maintain the connection with the outside. The isometric shows the module of the cremation block remains unchanged even after the addition of the roof.
The riverfront is the final part of the cremation ritual, where the users come to take bath in the water and to scatter the ashes. The riverfront opposite the prayer hall acts as a place of self-reflection. The riverfront after the cremation block acts as a plaza that is opened up as a gateway to the Shiv obelisks. Here, the obelisk is shown next to the human scale, acting as a reminder of the all-powerful Almighty. The riverfront also has provided designated ritual spaces along the plaza and steps leading down the water. The water channel is made in such a way such that it differentiates the two river fronts and does not allow mixing of the two user groups. Shown below is the section through the river front and zoomed in is the ritual space with 1.5 meter tall walls to provide privacy to the seated users. The isometric view helps in quantizing this space. A canal is connected to the river that manipulates the amount of water flowing around the ritual space. At the river front, the user is now done with all the ritual obligation and can now choose to return back home. The arrow shows the way out of the site and in between is a space that moves underground to act as a place of self-reflection. Shown here are the above ground and underground plans of the Solidarity Tunnel. This space has a channel in the center that stays stationary with fishes in it. This is such that it acts as a metaphor for rebirth and the existing life in and around the user. The cross section show the profile of the tunnel. Along the tunnel, cylindrical forms puncture into the space to act as meditation and private reflection areas. The views show how skylights help bring selective light into the tunnel. With voices echoing and low light everywhere, the user is left to look into him or her. And as they step back into the light, it is as if they are reborn, ready to return back into their lives, accepting the loss and moving on. The library is an added amenity in the program. It is meant to be a source of religious knowledge for the people seeking solace and closure. The library is meant to be introverted and protected with a layer of protection around it. The plan shows the library covered with a jali wall and lush greenery to make it as disconnected as possible from the crematorium. It also provides the user with private reading spaces along the edges, along with interior and exterior reading spaces. The isometric highlights the massing and shows the reading spaces in detail. The sections help make it clear the presence of skylights to maximize light entry and pergolas on the exterior for a pleasant reading experience. The administration block is made accessible from the main and service entrance and has spaces dedicated to bookkeeping, changing rooms, storage, pantry and an eating space. The storage areas for wood, agricultural waste and cow dung is located south of the admin block. This section shows how north light is maximized through skylights and windows and how southern radiation is concentrated on the corridor. The green roof also helps in reducing the heat gain. The elevation shows the stone wall sill till sill level and the use of planters on the facade. China mosaic tiles on the roof also help reduce heat gain. The people working in a crematorium typically all belong from the same caste. It was important to give them a sense of community and belonging for their upliftment. The plan shows the community space in the west dedicated to the staff members. There are three types of residential blocks that are provided. Number one are the dorm type block. Number two, a small family block. Number three, a larger family block. The presence of a temple in the center allows for festivities to be celebrated around the year. The blocks are meant to be simple and be incremental with the passage of time. The residents, as their families grow larger, can update their spaces to suit their needs. These show the possible options for the larger family block. Shown here are the possible options for the medium family block. And shown here are the possible options for the dormitory block.
Now moving on to the architectural representation drawings that include building construction drawings and services layouts. The drawings show the detail of the admin space showing the stone plinth walls and the form of the roof with the skylight. Detail of the library block shows the stone wall sill, the massing of the roof over it. It also shows the layer of china mosaic tiles to reduce the heat gain. Shown here are the detailed drawings of the prayer halls. The prayer hall details show the green roof and the skylight. Shown here are the detailed drawings of the temple block. The temple detail shows the stack of wooden joists and the detail of the water canal. The tunnel features two types of retaining walls. One is the plinth made of stone and the roof made of RCC. Shown here is the water supply layout. The water canals function by recycling the river's water. Shown here is the drainage layout. The inside grey water is filtered and reused on site for landscaping. This is done through soil biotechnology waste management system. The detail is shown below. Shown here is the storm water drainage and rainwater harvesting layout. Rainwater is harvested from the roof of library and admin block. Water is drained through the porous pavers, conventional drains and the river on the east. The firefighting layout highlights the hydrant line. Shown here is the electrical and solar layout. Two substations are provided for the crematorium and the staff quarters. The solar farm reduces the electrical load and solar street lights are also provided. 